welcome to the Cool Gray in Studio A podcast bonus episodes. These are only available to you if you are a Patreon supporter. So uh, thank you for that. And this is going to be the first mini-sode that I'm going to be bringing to you. And for this, I'm going to be reading out of an amazing book. And this book is simply called Etiquette. You know what etiquette is, don't you? Who wrote the book on etiquette, you may ask? Maybe you already know. Emily Post. Emily Post in 1922 wrote this book, and I recently rediscovered it while I was on vacation in Alaska, (laughs) sitting in a bed and breakfast, and this book happened to be sitting in the sitting room where I was enjoying a cup of tea and looking out uh, on the Alaska landscape and just started flipping through it, immediately bought my own copy so it was waiting for me when I got home and uh, started reading it. The foreword for this particular edition that I'm holding uh, was written by William Hansen and I want to start here to uh, just share with you some of what he has to say when revisiting this amazing book so many years later. In part he says, Her book, referring to Emily Post, has been updated and rewritten countless times by her descendants, but however many new popular culture references or technological updates are made, it's always essentially the same book with the same message as the original. Much of what Emily Post originally wrote is still applicable today. Granted, the art of the formal letter has been replaced by emails, texts, and WhatsApp, and invitations now come electronically through Facebook rather than stiff cards through the mail. So those chapters are now amusing vignettes on an almost bygone era. The introductions, conversations, dress, dining, and rites of passage, however, are still as relevant today as they were then. He goes on to say, manners are there to include, not exclude. They make life easier, and now more than ever in our fast-paced, selfish and unforgiving world, we all need to read and reread what she originally said. I'll give her the final word, and he quotes Emily Post, rules of etiquette are nothing more than the signposts by which we are guided to the goal of good taste. Gotta say I'm personally relating to some of that every day when I watch the news, and certainly when I scroll through my social media, I find myself longing for, um, let's say, a more gentrified time. I really do think that every generation gets to a point in their own lives when they look at the one coming up behind them and they find themselves saying that they just don't understand these kids today. I still remember the first time I ever found myself uttering those words and said, oh my goodness, I'm becoming my mother, Uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it certainly helped me understand that I had entered a new season of life. I find this book amazing. I'm going to read you a little bit from Emily Post herself from the first chapter, which is titled, What is Best Society? I'm just going to read some excerpts out of this, since it is a mini-sode. And um, I'm going to prime the pump by simply asking you to hold an image in your mind of any and every member of the Kardashian family as you read what Emily had to say about best society in 1922. She says, in part, the most advertised commodity is not always intrinsically the best, but it is sometimes merely the product of a company with plenty of money to spend on advertising. In the same way, money brings certain people before the public. Sometimes they are persons of quality. Quite as often, the so-called society leaders featured in the public press do not belong to good society at all, in spite of their many published photographs and the energies of their press agents. Or perhaps they do belong to smart society, but if too much advertised, instead of being the queens they seem, they might more accurately be classified as the court jesters of today. Further on in the chapter, Emily says, etiquette must, if it is to be more than trifling use, include ethics as well as manners. Certainly what one is, is of far greater importance than what one appears to be. 
A knowledge of etiquette is, of course, essential to one's decent behavior, just as clothing is essential to one's decent appearance, and precisely as one wears the latter without being self-conscious of having on shoes and perhaps gloves, one who has good manners is equally unselfconscious in the observance of etiquette, the precepts of which must be so thoroughly absorbed as to make their observance a matter of instinct rather than of conscious obedience. Thus, best society is not a fellowship of the wealthy, nor does it seek to exclude those who are not of exalted birth, but it is an association of gentle folk of which good form in speech charm of manner, knowledge of the social amenities, and instinctive consideration for the feelings of others are the credentials by which society, the world over, recognizes its chosen members. That is the selection I'm going to bring you today, and I am already planning to bring you future selections from this book, as well as many, many other things, as I have said in uh, past episodes and in my Patreon ads, these minisodes are going to be little nuggets of wisdom and insanity that roll across my brain. And today that is on my brain. It just really does not make you a snob to have good manners. When we treat each other with decency and we are on the same page about just exactly how we are to interrelate with one another, I just think the entire conversation about being human is elevated. So I want to leave you with that encouragement today and to encourage you to be kind to one another. We don't know what the people we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis are going through, what challenges they're facing. And I don't know which challenges you're facing, but I do know that a smile and a, a kindness behind the eyes and a little bit of human decency goes a long, long way. So I want to leave that with you. I want to say thanks for listening. Come on back, and I will see you next time.